Welcome to Medicine in a Nutshell's Guide to Conducting an Obstetric Examination. To successfully complete this examination, you will require a tape measure, a dating wheel, and a pinard stethoscope. Before starting, take a thorough obstetric history. Position the patient lying down. A patient at term may become dizzy lying flat due to vena cave obstruction. Ensure the patient is comfortable and not dizzy or nauseous. The patient should be comfortable at a 30 degree angle. A successful examination is systematic and follows the rules of inspection, palpation, auscultation. Firstly, complete a general inspection. You are looking for the stigmata of systemic disease and also pregnancy related illnesses. Here, note your general impressions. Does the patient look well or do they look comfortable? Look at the hands and take a pulse. At this point, you may wish to take her blood pressure. Examine the signs of anemia or jaundice. Ask the patient to expose the abdomen. Adequate exposure is from the pubic synthesis to the zifis sternum. Inspect the abdomen closely. The abdomen is distended, consistent with a gravid uterus. Can you see any surgical scars, visible fetal movements, any striae, or linear nigra. Note whether the abdomen is a convexity, suggesting an occipito anterior position, or a concavity, suggesting an occipito posterior position of the fetus. Palpation. Now measure the symphysis fundal height. Start at the ziphi sternum and move down until you feel the fundus. Place your tape measure at the fundus and measure down to the most superior aspect of the pubic synthesis. This should be a blind measurement, therefore have the centimetre side touching the patient's skin so you cannot see it. The symphofundal height is 36 centimetres in line with the gestational age. Pregnancies are dated via scans, however you may wish to use a dating wheel. Please see our dating wheel video on this link to see how to use this fully. Now palpate the abdomen for the fetal lie, presentation, engagement and the quality of the lie core. Here the left side feels flat and smooth and hard consistent with the fetal back. The right feels lumpy consistent with the fetal parts. This is the left occipito anterior position. Use a bimanual approach. Stabilise with one hand and palpate with the other. The lie is longitudinal and there is a cephalic presentation. Now palpate the fetal head. The head will be hard, round and floating above the pelvic brim. The fetal head is split into fifths. When giving a clinical impression of engagement, a turn it may be more difficult to palpate as it is descended into the pelvic brim. This technique may be uncomfortable for the patient. Finally, auscultation. Place the pinocystoscope over the anterior shoulder. This will depend on your clinical judgment of fetal position. Place it here for the right occipito posterior position. Here for the right occipito anterior position. Here for the left occipito anterior position. And here for the left occipito posterior position. Place the scope in the correct position. Hold it in place with your ear so not to muffle the sound with your hand. Take the lady's pulse at the same time to ensure you're listening to the fetal heart rate. You are listening for rate and variability. You may wish to use a Doppler at this point. This completes your examination. Thank the patient and cover her up. Now, a guide to presenting the case. To present a history, there are four key areas. Number one, give a brief history of the lady. State her comorbidities, her age, the gestational age, her BP and her urine dipping cells. Number two, describe inspection. Firstly, describe her in general, and then describe the abdomen. Number three, describe the uterus. Describe the symphofundal height, the number of fetuses, the lie, the presentation, engagement, and the quality of the lie curve. Number four, assess the fetal heart rate using a pinard stethoscope. Philippa is a 25-year-old 
Prima Gravida. She is at 36 weeks and three days gestation. She has a background of good health with no comorbidities. She is normal tensive and her urine dip is negative. On general inspection, she is comfortable at rest. Clinically, there is no jaundice, anemia or swelling. On inspection, the abdomen is distended consistent with a gravid uterus. There is no linear nigra and there is no stri gravidarum or albicans. On examination of the uterus, the symphysofundal height was 36 centimetres, which is in line with her gestation. There is one fetus with a longitudinal life, cephalic presentation, and is in the left occipito anterior position. The head was two fifths engaged and the lycor was clinically adequate. The fetal heart rate was 130 beats a minute with reassuring variability. 